let's focus on how to create the packaging for your item that you're going to send to your supplier. Now before we go any further, it's important to once again point out that my philosophy behind this is very different to what you may have heard before. I've personally used this process for many, many years and 100% confident that it is the best method for you when you're starting out on Amazon. In fact, this may be the method you stick with for the rest of your selling career. First of all, your product packaging should be simple and functional. In other words, it doesn't need to be ready for retail. In fact, it's quite the opposite. With the intelligent sales machine style brands, we focus on keeping the packaging as plain as possible. The reason for this is because the packaging doesn't create the sale, the listing and the offer does. I've heard so many so-called gurus say that product packaging will help you increase the sales of your item. And I'd like to say that I have seen absolutely no evidence of this being true. Remember, we are selling our item on the Amazon platform. We're looking for products that are in demand, but the offer isn't as good as it could be. We're then putting together a better offer and getting that in front of potential customers. We are not creating a big brand. We are creating a lifestyle business. Keeping your packaging simple is in keeping with that philosophy. Going for overly designed packaging will absolutely increase potential issues with your product. One simple example being language. If your item is predominantly in English, then you're going to have localization issues once you start expanding. Keep it simple and plain and those issues go away. One thing to remind you of is that the supplier generally dictates the type of packaging you're going to use. They will be the ones who will send you the current packaging their items come in and then ask you whether you want to improve the design of that packaging or not. You should always ask them for their current packaging when you're ordering the item with them to see what they've already got and simplify it. The final point on packaging is that it's always an evolution. I'm not saying that you'll never have multilingual packaging that's retail ready. I'm simply telling you to avoid starting there and scale your packaging as your business grows. Let's move on to the different types of packaging you're going to come across when you speak to different suppliers. There are four types of packaging. The first type is a soft wrapper or bag. A good example of this would be a bag of potato chips or bedding that's delivered in a soft outer bag with a handle. Now a soft packaged product doesn't have to have a handle, but it can if the product requires it. Next we have what we call a hanging clam or blister type of packaging. Good examples you have seen before would be a flashlight or a set of video or AV cables. These items typically come in a plastic casing that's generally pretty difficult to open as it's sealed. Next, we have a gift box, which is essentially a box that's ready to be sold at retail. Good examples here would be a kettle or a small appliance. This is a very common type of packaging and is certainly one you'll see a lot. The only issue with a gift box is that it can be damaged easily in transit, and Amazon are extremely picky when it comes to what they consider suitable for sale. Now, I'm not saying to avoid gift boxes, I'm simply making you aware of the issues that are associated with them. Finally, we have tagged or loose products. Generally, these products are stored and sold in bulk. For example, think of a box of plush toys or kitchen utensils on display in a store like IKEA. These items sit in boxes and invite customers to simply reach out and add them to their basket. We want to avoid these items when selling on Amazon as they can't be stored in FBA. It's as simple as that really. The key point on packaging is that you want to move towards the first soft type of packaging as much as you can. This may involve you telling the supplier to change the packaging in order to get the item's packaging to where you need it to be. Let's say, for instance, that the supplier only gift boxed a bedding product and you wanted them to put it in a soft outer bag. You'd have to describe to the supplier exactly what you're looking for. While this may pose some challenges, it's best to do this as it will get your items to where you need them to be to get into Amazon easily and to reduce unsellable stock items. It's also important to note that not all products can be placed in soft packaging. Let's say you're looking to sell a kettle. Now, you would never sell one of these as it's a powered product, but for the purpose of this example, let's just say you could. Well, you wouldn't want to put a kettle in a soft bag as it would easily break. In this case, you'd simply have to accept that it will be gift boxed and move on. Let's dive into each type of packaging and tell you exactly what to do with each of them. I'll begin with the least desirable and work towards the type of packaging that's best for you. So as you already know, I'm not a fan of tagged items. The main reason is that Amazon doesn't actually accept loose products. This essentially rules this type of packaging out. To localize these items for sale on Amazon, you would have to put a bag around each individual item before delivering the product to Amazon. 
This would make the product a category one or soft type of packaging. If you choose to do this, make sure that your packaging has a clear visible label showing at least the barcode. The barcode is key here. You would have to ask your supplier to do this for you if they only tagged each item during production. Let's move on to gift boxed items. As I mentioned, these are very common, but do pose problems. If you have to sell your item as a gift box, you must make sure that the box has six sides. The box must also have an opening or a lid that won't easily open in transit. You may have to ask your supplier to tape the box shut if that's the case, as an open box is technically not fit for sale on Amazon. The box must not collapse when medium pressure is applied to it. In other words, you must make sure that the box doesn't contain a lot of air, which means that the box is closely boxed around the item without leaving a big gap between the item and the box itself. Using extra inner packing may be required to protect the item effectively. Again, speak to your supplier about this and ask them how they currently pack the item. Also have seen how they packaged it when you got the sample. Next, the box must have a clear visible label with at least a barcode on it. For now, we recommend using a plain white box with a label. I'll show you what the label must include and how it'll look later in this module. Now, if you're absolutely insistent that your item must come in a design gift box, be aware that you'll have to create the design yourself by asking the supplier to send you their current box design. As I've said, I do not recommend starting like this, but if you do choose to go this route, this is what you've got to do. You then require a designer to make the box design for you. Just because an item must come gift box doesn't mean we can't do it. We just need to be aware that our outer box and inner boxing has got to be on point. And we must also be careful when handling the items as any damage to the box will render it unsaleable. When it comes to the clamshell type of packaging, you must first make sure that the item is completely sealed. The packaging must have a clear visible label on it with at least a barcode. This type of packaging is more favorable than both gift boxed and tagged but it's actually not a very common type of packaging. As I mentioned, you'll likely see this type of packaging used for both cables and flashlights. This is certainly a type of packaging that you can have at your disposal should your item suit and make sense. Final and most desirable type of packaging is soft packaging. As I mentioned earlier, you always wanna to move towards this type of packaging if possible. An important point about individually packaged soft packaging is that the poly bag or soft package must be transparent for Amazon to accept it into their FBA centers. The thickness of the bag must be 1.5 millimeters or more. Generally speaking, the thicker the bag, the more protected the item is, and therefore the better your item will travel. The bag must also be completely sealed, similar to the gift box. If you find that the item might open easily, you can ask your supplier to tape it closed if they haven't already placed a seal on the product. The packaging must not protrude more than three inches past the product as well. This is something you'll want to mention to your supplier to ensure that this is the case. It's also something to check when you receive your samples. Finally, poly bags with more than a five inch opening require a suffocation warning to be placed on the packaging. This is generally something that your supplier will be aware of, but it's also something that you must check for when you're speaking with them. Here's what the warning must look like. As we mentioned, this is very important and must be printed on your poly bag. The minimum print size really depends on the size of the bag, but below you'll find the print size in relation to the length and width of the bag. Once again, getting these measurements is simply about asking your supplier to come back to you with these details.